got our very own build rat stowaway. We've adopted him. He's going to be prior to place in my hole. He's going to probably, I might glass him in actually. I might lay a couple of layers of laminate over him and just stick him on the wall. How gorgeous is that? <laughs> So leaving it sit in acetone, although it cleans it, is uh, is probably not the best method. G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to recap for a moment here before I get into it. And uh, last episode I installed the forward cabin modules that I'd uh, made previously and then I it was time for me to get started on the forward wing frames which I'd already templated so it was time to laminate them with the foam core and um, we had to make some structural changes with the surveyor as well so all those changes have been made now I'm going to apologize for the audio at the beginning of this uh, video due to the fact that the wind was that strong that it was having a serious impact on the microphone so let's get into it So the plans uh, that I've had approved for the uh, survey didn't allow for a chain locker. And the chain uh, locker for this boat uh, actually enters here. So it comes out here and along and out over the front of the bow of the boat. But it actually comes in here into a windlass or a barrel uh, type windlass. Um, probably a, a vertical windlass here. And this is going to be my chain locker. So I've worked out of these plans that I need a chain locker of 60 centimetres or 1.2 metres wide intersecting back here. So that means I've got to remove this centre bulkhead from here, uh, from around here, because this here is the hole for the anchor that goes in through here. So I need to put another one of these wing plates here and another one here. So in this area here, so that this area over here is void and that will have a, a windlass built into it. And, uh, and obviously a chain locker underneath. So preparation of this uh, laminating table, I'm going to be laying wet up on this. It's not worth trying to wax up a surface. I'm better off just putting down some black plastic, um, concreting plastic or builder's plastic. <clears throat> and laying up straight on it, I should get you know the entire bulkhead series out of this one piece of plastic. So, hopefully. So it appears that the rest of my life is going to be spent taking the templates that I've already derived from the plans and the and the whole shape of my chain jig, and then uh, scribing them onto the H80 foam, and then cutting them out. And I did actually work out at a later date that I was better off laminating up a complete. 2.1 by um, 1.2 meter sheet of foam and then using the excess for uh, smaller structural components i.e. drawers, small braces that I needed but for now I did the entire wing frame section by doing them individually and uh, this is how I went about that. So it looks as though I'm going to be able to lay up uh, two wing plates at once which is just superb because I thought I was going to be doing one at a time and so what's got to go on here is uh, this has to be uh, laminated in relation to the engineer's specifications because these were going to be plywood. They now have to be, this is a 20 mil H80 foam, so it's a 80 kilograms per cubic meter in weight. Uh, it has two layers of 300 CSM to get a bonding to the, uh, to the foam core. Uh, and then two layers of 600 double bias, and then I'm gonna peel ply both surfaces. So on each side, so you can imagine 20 mil, with another four layers, um, around about uh, 1800 uh, G per square meter. So fairly substantial layout, but will save a lot of weight. Um, you know, a piece of plywood of that size, you know, you're starting to, to get up there with weight, but I'm happy to go with foam, no rotting, no issues uh, going forward. Um, but being able to lay up two at once is just absolutely superb. I'll be able to just keep going, keep going, and. Uh, and, and then uh, this afternoon I'll flip them back over and get the second layer on them. I go to uh, start laminating my longitudinal bulkheads right up in the bow of my boat 
and uh, I put the filter, I cleaned my machine out the other day and, and let it to sit, and of course the acetone has broken down the filter. So these are the sorts of things you've got to be very aware of because without this filter, I'm gonna suck any sort of debris up into my machine and that nozzle is like a microscopic hole where I'm getting that guaranteed spray pattern. So without this ultra fine mesh filter, now you can see it's gonna be freaking useless without the ends on it. So what I found was these had fallen off. So leaving it sit in acetone, although it cleans it, is, uh, is probably not the best method and um, it's 12 months old, so I guess I've been pretty lucky that it hasn't come off. But if that had to come off mid uh, spray up, there's a good chance I'm going to suck up a, a piece of coagulated gel or a bit of dust or something into my machine and, and could potentially do some damage. So, yep, dry it down. I've given it a good sand. I'm going to use some methacryl and glue it back together, leave it out in the sun, and hopefully in about two hours I'll be able to get onto it. So let's do that. I'm going to embed this back into... The end of the filter here. That's looking pretty good. It's about as good as it needs to be. There just always seems to be something at the beginning of a laminating session that uh, slows me up. But you know that's part of uh, working in a, in a factory environment when you're working on your own. You haven't got somebody doing all the maintenance for you. So the important thing is here that I jack the catalyst up just after filming this to 2%. Um, that's what we call hot coating. And, and by hot coating, you're actually jacking up the catalyst, making sure that it is going to really set fast. And it's important that we get this uh, fast setting on the first layer so that the adhesion is maximized. Because I'm not vacuum infusing, it or vacuum bagging these uh, these laminates, um, it just ensures that there's going to be no chance of delamination. Now, I was looking for good penetration into this foam as I laminated these, and uh, and and certainly did get that. And I'll show you a little bit later on where I uh, can prove that where it goes through the perforations and actually forms those uh, those rivets that run through the perforations in the foam core. But for now, there's a little bit of music in the background here for you to enjoy uh, several, and I'm talking several hours of laminating here, all time lapsed uh, for your benefit. <laughs> So the last layer, so there's two 300s, two 600 double bias, and then uh, the last layer on peel ply. Fine, if I've got it on a big dunny roll like this, um, like a, a toilet paper roll or a big fiberglass roll, I can keep the tension as I stretch it out. In fact, I think a couple, a couple of you have commented on it, so I'm gonna get my mask on and get it done. Morning guys, next morning, um, I've just come in, just want to check if I can pull these off and have a look at what sort of penetration I've got with the resin as I roll these in. So, first thing is I should be able to lift these off. see through here I've got very good penetration of that resin through those little um, perforations that are in the, in the foam. Um, that resin's basically gone all the way through so that gives me those uh, rivets clawing the glass to the, to the, uh, to the bulkhead and um, really really good uh, adhesion. Absolutely no chance of any delamination there because I spent a lot of time making sure that was hot coated on so uh, yeah, pretty happy going to get on with the second coat, second side.
So at the end of the laminating, I uh, obviously had to trim the peel ply back because I had this great idea that I was going to use a router with a, uh, a normal bit to route the fiberglass back to the edge of the foam. Now this, although what I thought was a great idea, actually turned out to be a bit of a disaster. The router bit actually burnt the foam and the wheel that uh, stops you from biting into the foam, in fact, started to burn against the foam core. So I decided that uh, it was back to the grinder with the uh, diamond wheel. And you know, to be honest, after all the things I've used, and I've used every tool in the book, uh, I simply haven't come up with a better solution than a grinder with a diamond wheel. And then it was, uh, you know, it was if in doubt, get your flap disc out for the tidy up. So that's sort of the process I've had to use for the entire bulkheading and uh, all of these uh, wing frame um, cut out is, is the grinder and then, the, and then the flat disc and you know I've had some pretty good results I think you can get a lot of accuracy and in fact it's quick the only thing I will say is because it was a stinking hot day I forgot to put my suit on and I itched like a bastard for about a week after that, uh, that little session you see there but anyway job got done and uh, I've moved on So the first is done, I've just spent about an hour grinding it uh, to the right shape. Um, yeah, perfect. Oh, let me show you the cross section. Okay, so this has got peel ply on either side, but uh, you know, you can see this, this is actually 300, sorry, H80, foam, 300, 300, CSM, 600, 600 double bias. So it's, it's a serious piece of structural um, uh, foam now with a, an incredible rigidity, but, uh, you know, definitely um, not going to rot and, and certainly not going to delaminate. I mean, this thing's incredible, the strength of it. So pretty happy to see that baby in. So just had a pass arrival. I was feeling a little bit tired, a little bit down today. Cause I'm like, I don't know, I've done a little bit over the last couple of days and I'm just knackered. Um, this pass arrival, I've been waiting for it for a little while and uh, it's from the guys at SV Seeker. So this is a very interesting parcel because um, about 12 months ago, Doug approached me to to mint these coins for uh, our for our YouTube channel. And I, th I, I didn't think it'd ever have legs my YouTube channel. I thought, yeah, I'm lucky if I ever get to 10 subscribers, let alone sort of eight, nine thousand. But um, anyway, it's here, this box is here. Let's have a look what's in here. I think there might even be a, uh, a stowaway in here from uh, from SV Seeker. Let's check it out. A great unboxing. Oh, customs declaration. Doesn't say anything about, um, <laughs> doesn't say anything about a stowaway. But I'll cut it very gently just in case. All right, so. Check this out. <laughs> it's bilgy. <laughs> it's a dead bilge rat. Let's get into life, eh? Classic. Classic Betty. I love it. <laughs> I love it. We got uh, got our very own bilge rat stowaway. We've adopted him. He's going to be prior to place in my hole. He's going to. Probably I might glass him in actually. I might lay a couple of layers of laminate over him and just stick him on the wall. How gorgeous is that? <laughs> Classic, I love it, I love it. And uh, what else is in here? Not really sure. Oh, they've sent me a beanie. It's like 40 degrees here. This will come in handy in a month's time when the weather starts to change. But that uh, awesome SBC beanie, what a great Christmas present. And uh, 
The build rat t-shirt. I love it. That's exactly what I wanted. I, I am a build rat. I'll spend more time in the build than anybody. I know that. So these, if you want to buy a decent toy and a good prezi for somebody, this is a great suggestion. I suggest you, uh, I'm selling gear for you guys now, for Christ's sake. I love it. Thank you guys. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, the uh, the piece that I use these stones that uh, I like a big coffee. I bought myself an SV Seeker mug. Check that out. It's come all the way from Oklahoma, and uh, and now I'm going to be able to have my morning coffee with Keith the Surfing Ninja. He's going to hate it when he makes a cappuccino that big every morning. Thanks, Doug and Betsy. Awesome stuff. And uh, what else we got here? Oh, strike a light. You guys have all been buying these out there to support me. Check that out. It's not even chocolate. Look at that. Life on the mold coin. That is brilliant. Wow, it's got some weight to it. That's actually real. I thought they were chocolate. <laughs> that is superb. So if you buy one of these guys, they get their um, setup cost back, but I get 15 US. And you know, stuff like this, if you can buy these on my channel or buy them on uh, SV Seekers website, I get 15 US out of that from them and honestly they send me a little bit of money every month and that's helping me buy my cartridges for my um, my respirator system and a little bit of safety gear so it doesn't all go in beer and chocolate although some of it probably will most of it's going to go towards my safety gear because I'm finding that as I work through this project those costs are, are quite exponential you just need to keep um, the good safety gear gloves all that stuff and that's what I'm using those funds for so please buy yourself a coin an SV Seeker coin, uh, from SV Seeker, it's a life on the mole coin. And while you're there, check out the other 11 channels because they're all doing exactly the same as I'm doing. We're all funding it ourselves and trying to uh, to move ahead. And you know, the finances are getting a bit tight at this end. So check that out. That is amazing. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Very, very happy to be involved in that. And I've got a couple of keychain fobs as well, so you can carry me around in your pocket. Imagine me rustling around in your pocket, that's bloody fantastic. I am one happy lad, I've got one more half size one of these to go, and then this becomes my chain locker, so pretty happy. So catch you later guys.